from the basement of La Penta, it's WICR. Hello everyone, welcome back to the Sports Vault Jersey, Joe Archino back here, and we really are just about at the halfway point of the NFL season, and really... There's, there's outliers, as there always is, but in largely we have the good feel finally for almost every team in the league. And it's one of those things where I think when you look at it, the re-emphasis on who the smart GMs are has really become abundantly clear based on one thing, and that's the offensive line. When you look around this league, the smart GMs build from the offensive line out The ones who aren't the best GMs, they build from the flashy positions and then in. When you look at the teams who are the best in the league right now, obviously the Cowboys, what they have right now, I'm not saying they're the best team in the league, I don't think they are, but a lot of their success from what Dak Prescott's been able to do to what Ezekiel Elliott's been able to do is tied to that offensive line. And Obviously the Cowboys were in a position where they had to do some rebuilding, but they rebuilt the smart way they get it obviously with Tyron Smith and then what they've done in the draft since they have built that offensive line and that offensive line is wreaking havoc around the league I think largely that's a huge reason why Dak Prescott has been able to do what he's done and you have to give him a lot of credit as well but most of it to me is because his job is fundamentally easier by the fact that his offensive line has been so good and I really think when you look at the teams that right now are at such a deficit, a lot of it is that lack of offensive line. You can have a transcendent quarterback and not be able and just miss out on so much potential because you don't have the offensive line. And I think the biggest, biggest, most identifiable one that's so easy to spot is the Colts with Andrew Luck. To me, Andrew Luck and the Colts obviously right now are at 3-4, and four, which is really a travesty when you look at what Andrew Luck is, how good he is, and how rare it is for the Colts to have been so lucky to have gone from Peyton Manning to Andrew Luck. But now they're in a position now where I think they just need that total overhaul. I've said this before, and I don't want to spend too much time on it, but obviously Chuck Pagano, Ryan Gregson, that whole roster, everything, it needs to get blown up. There's one piece on that roster that can stay, and that's Andrew Luck, obviously. But you look at him this season, he's been sacked 25 times. His numbers are great. I mean, 14 touchdowns, 2,074 yards. His offensive numbers are tremendous. But when you look at the amount of times he is getting sacked, it is almost unbelievable. I mean, Andrew Luck, we all understand, he was hurt last season, and reasonably so. This is a guy who lives on the ground, and we've seen so many great quarterbacks. Aaron Rodgers early in his career, even to an extent now, not as much, has been on the ground a lot. The Green Bay Packers struggled protecting him. The Colts right now are in a position where they're not be, uh, they're really being limited from what they can be, and there's a lot of reasons behind that. But one of the biggest identifiable weaknesses that Ryan Gregson has just ignored or not been able to effectively get players for is the line. And when you have a quarterback as good as Luck, and I, don't make no mistake about it, Andrew Luck is as good as they come. He is going to be held back if you don't have a line that's properly protecting him. I think the Titans, the team that they just played this past Sunday, is almost the perfect comparison to look at it. The Colts, they're, the, the Titans, their rookie year with Marcus Mariota, I think Marcus Mariota is really going to be a guy who one day in the NFL is going to do some great things. But his rookie season, he was putting up good numbers, and then he got hurt, and then obviously he, we, we go from there. But one of the biggest problems was that offensive line could not protect him. Marcus Mariota is not the biggest guy in the world. He's tall, he's lengthy, he's got speed, he's got wheels. But if you let your your franchise quarterback take the punishment they were letting him, you're not going to have a franchise quarterback for very long. But in year two, Marcus Mariota, obviously, he's been playing really, really well. In the fourth quarter, he's been tremendous. I picked the Colts to win this past weekend out of purely out of desperation. The Colts could not fall to two and five. It, they just couldn't. Now they're at three and four. But I just think that was such a desperation win for them. They needed to have it so badly. But the Titans are becoming what the Colts should have been already with Andrew Luck. Because in year two, they addressed the biggest problem that they had, and the most important issue was the offensive line. Marcus Mariota still doesn't have the best talent in the world, but the Titans did it the right way. You build from the offensive line first, 
and then you worry about the other positions. You can always find a receiver. You can always find a running back. But what you can't always find, they're not, not just laying around, is good, effective offensive linemen. They drafted well. They picked some good guys out in free agency. And now you look at how much healthier Marcus Mariota is going to be able to be. His sack numbers, I think when you project them out from what they were last season, even with the injury, they will be lower. And to me, that's such a good sign for what the Titans done and what they've corrected. But the Colts, on the other hand, totally have missed out on it. And it's so easy, you know, I think sometimes we overcomplicate things. We look and we try to look at speed. Oh, you need an Antonio Brown. Oh, you need an A.J. Green. You've got to go out there and get yourself a Le'Veon Bell. Not necessarily. When you really look at it in the NFL, teams that are always being able to do things, they either have the dominant offensive line or the dominant defensive line. You look at what the Broncos were able to do in the Super Bowl last season with that dominant defensive line, the dominant defense in general, but largely, it all starts on offense, and especially if you're a young team trying to build into a great team with the offensive line, with building from the inside out. Because again, how many dimes a dozens is there really going to be in the NFL? When you have a guy like Andrew Luck, who's doing what he's doing with T.Y. Hilton's and Dantes Moncrief's and Dwayne Allen's, he's the one who's making these players. It's not the other way around. You can have a transcendent quarterback, and you still have to surround him with talent. I don't think there's any debate about that. And I think Luck, again, one of the things that shows you how good he actually is is with the talent he does have. He has no running game. He has no receivers. He has no offensive line, and this is what he's done. And another guy that I think just proves my point even th- further is Matthew Stafford. Matt Stafford with the Lions, they started their season 1-7 last year. Then they won six of their last eight games. Now, obviously, this year they've gotten off to a good start, 4-3. and three. They lose a couple games here and there. But right now they're on a three-game win streak. But Matt Stafford, even in that three-game win streak, I told you Andrew Luck was sacked 25 times so far this season. Matthew Stafford's been sacked 18 times so far this season. His numbers are obviously actually very close to what Luck's are. 15 touchdowns for Matt Stafford, 1,914 yards, and of course I go back to the sack numbers. He's been sacked 18 times. But when you look at Stafford, when you look at Andrew Luck, similarly built, big arms, big strong guys, guys who can use their mobility to take off, but where they are very similar is on their teams. Offensive line's very weak, very weak running game on both teams. Maybe not as bad for the Lions in the offensive core trying to get the ball out to people. He still has Golden Tate, but obviously no Calvin Johnson now. Really no effective tight end. What these transcendent quarterbacks are able to do with what they have, with their talent alone, is incredible. But you see how much you're missing out by not surrounding them with an offensive line. If Matthew Stafford had a solid offensive line, or he had a decent running game, and he had maybe another wideout other than Golden Tate, I think you look at the Lions, and right now when we when you kind of look at the N- NFC North, with the Vikings doing what they did, they just had a loss on the road to the Eagles. The Packers have really not hit their stride so far this season. They're 4-2, and two, but I don't think we really look at them, and we still are kind of scratching our head thinking there's something missing there. I still think no matter, even with how good the Vikings all uh, have been on the defensive side and how good Bradford has been until this Sunday, there's no reason the Lions couldn't win that division and maybe win a playoff game with a Matthew Stafford with that offensive line and with a running game. But those things aren't there, and that's why continually you see the Lions continue to be in this position. I think with the Colts, they've done great things with Andrew Luck. They've reached playoff mile highs. They've continued to build, but that's what Luck is at another level than even Stafford. Luck is such one of those rare once in a generation types of players because again this offensive line has really never gotten better since he came into the league if anything the offensive talent around him has deteriorated as he has gone further into his NFL career and the sacks have just continued to pile up and again that's why when you look at that injury that happened to him 
it happened there because you can only take so much punishment in this league. Guys are bigger. Guys are stronger. Guys are faster. Everyone in the NFL poses a threat, and that's what makes the offensive line so incredibly important. But don't overthink the room ever, folks. You look at who the best GMs in this league are, all you need to do is look at the process that they went through in putting things together, especially if it's a young team. Smart GMs build from the line out. The ones who maybe aren't as sharp or aren't as ahead of the curb, they build from the outside in. It really does work, and I think the Cowboys are the biggest proof of all. And when you look at the numbers and the struggles of the teams with great quarterbacks being held back by inferior offensive lines, the proof is just there as well. But until the next time, Jersey Joe Archino here with the Sports Fault. You can follow me on Twitter at Joe Archino and on Instagram, Jersey underscore Joe underscore Archino. And I'll catch everybody in the next episode.